SL T Mobitel Home Broadband Samaging Non Stop Gamanagata Data Bowan SL T Mobitel Home Broadband Samaging Non Stop Gamanagata Data Bowan headlines tonight geopolitical conference of interest member states of quad bricks belt and road to meet at donor conference to assist Sri Lanka Japan invites to hold a meeting in Tokyo says Prime Minister it, it will be a geopolitical conference of interest planning for disaster businessman turned parliamentarian Dhammika Pereira warns Prime Minister to resign as finance minister Sri Lanka's finance minister planned for disaster. Reinforcing friendship, Sri Lanka's president reaches out to Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin for fuel credit support. Also appeals to Russia to resume Aeroflot's flight operations to Colombo after recent diplomatic row. The wait is over. Daily distribution of over 100,000 cylinders of LP gas island-wide from the 10th of July. All this and much more coming up tonight on First at Nine, this Wednesday, the 6th of July, 2022. From Ada Derana, this is Ada Derana First at Nine, live from Studio 24 in Colombo. And a warm welcome. You're joining us on Other Therana 24 English News Service, and I'm Indivari Amuatha. Prime Minister Ranil Wickremasinghe says that discussions are underway with several countries, including China, India, and Japan, for a donor conference, which the Premier termed would be a unique geopolitical conference of interest. In an exclusive interview with Al Jazeera, he said that the meeting will comprise member nations of the Quad, BRICS, and Belt and Road Initiative. Japan has meanwhile expressed interest to hold the meeting in Tokyo. Another crisis is the crisis of food security and previous government's decision to go organic and burn fertilizer has to do with, with, with that along with the global rise in food, food inflation in the wake of Ukraine war. If I ask you, uh, what, what are you doing to, to address that issue? We've set up a food security program. The Ministry of Agriculture and the Ministry of Home Affairs Ministry of Irrigation have also come up with their plans and it's basically to how do we get over the shortages from now until February. We are going all out to get sufficient funds so that we could start the next cultivation season which is basically the long season again starting from about October, November going into January. Once we get fertilizer, we need about 500 to 600 million dollars. Once we get the fertilizer and the seeds and the other chemicals that are necessary and there is no drought, then we will be self-sufficient in food from 2023 February. There has been a fall in the nutrition standards, so we have to give food to them. But we are taking steps to ensure that no one goes hungry. There was a report that Quad has proposed that they might organize a donor conference for Sri Lanka. Also, you have been talking about donor conference with India, Japan and other countries. Can we talk about this donor conference, like which other countries you're relying on? Our main players have been basically Japan, India, China. We, we are talking with all of them and we are also talking, Japan has expressed an interest generally of summer, having Tokyo as the meeting place. That was the meeting place earlier in 2003. I've been speaking with China too. There's a different approach. But it, it will be a unique conference. The other players will come in US and all will be there. But the, of the three main players, only one belongs to the Paris Club. So you will see on one hand the Paris Club, on the other hand the BRICS. Then the other way around, you will see two members of the Quad and one member of the Belt and Road Initiative. So it, it, it will be a geopolitical conference of interest. You mentioned that you will be approaching Russia for few. I heard that you will be sending your minister to Russia. A minister will be visiting Moscow sometime later this week or the next week. When you go for IMF and you also talked about other donors such as World Bank, they also ask you to go for austerity measures, which means a lot of pain for the working class. Can you talk about what your plans, as you said that you know you don't want anybody to starve. So there is a dichotomy here because the 
loans will put you a lot of conditions. How will you balance that and what are your plans? The interim budget seeks to add another 200 billion rupees to the welfare program. So looking at the situation, we'll decide how much more is required for welfare in 2023. Already we've set aside money and this is, this is an increase of the funds. And I hope that will be sufficient together with the food program we are driving. Regarding the political reforms, the proposal uh, you came up that it will cut president's power, but still the president is still retains some of the powers. Uh, do you think an Indian model kind of precedent which is totally nominal, no power, should be implemented, which the protesters are demanding? Well, you've got to get people to sit down. I don't think the protesters had very many demands. They, they just wanted to change. The people, the groups that won the executive presidency, uh, abolish came up as one solution. But that for them was the alternative to the president leaving. Uh, one group wanted the president to leave. And this group said, well, uh, we'll abolish the executive presidency. So in a sense, they gave an alternative and the president took the uh, second alternative. Now, it's, it's not only a question of just abolishing the executive presidency. How do you make parliament strong? I mean, we just can't have a system where the cabinet only runs it. So what I'm doing is to open up parliament. But it's also how do we accommodate the views? Of how do you open it out to the young people, the youth? They feel they have been left out by the present system and that that's valid. I think it's such a valid uh, point that they have made and the parties have to open up. Newly sworn in parliamentarian business tycoon Damika Pereira insists that Prime Minister Ranil Vikrama Singh should resign as finance minister, claiming that he has no plan to resolve the current dollar crisis in the country. Now, Damika Pereira, who is the Minister of Investment Promotion, said today that the Premier was delaying dollar earnings avenues and termed the PM's actions as a plan for disaster. Pereira was speaking to media following a meeting with officials of the Department of Immigration and Immigration today. During the meeting between Minister of Investment Promotion and officials of the Department of Immigration and Immigration, decisions were made to open up branches of the Department of Immigration and Immigration in Jaffna, Batiklo, Noorelia, Ratnapura and Kurunagala districts. A centre for one-day service passport issuance will also be set up in Kurunagala. It was decided to extend tourist visas granted for foreigners for the existing one month to six months. Five-year multiple visa category will now be open for tourists from Europe. Following the meeting, Damika Perera addressed the media. Finance Minister Hattieta, Rani Lukram Singh, may Karana Deshapalna game maker, Mithani Navatanaveno. Mukada Yata dollar gain a hammer project Kama Navatano. Ramaratrama, Prime Minister Hattier Pashne and Ne, ten year multiple visa, Masaka Isella, Api document, Hadala, Okamakala, Cabinet approval, Gatte, Adata Masia Quenava, Treasury again make a Tiagan inno, again a dollar million of Tihak, Ratata gain a Pulwam, May Masse. Sri Lanka's finance minister planned for disaster. The minister of finance has no plan, appetite to resolve the current dollar crisis. All of Sri Lanka's economic challenges are linked to the dollar crisis. The finance minister planned to borrow money from friends. The minister of finance had no future cash flow planning for the country. Further, the minister delayed all the matters related to the dollar earnings, borrowing, bridging finance, available credit lines and essential good credit lines. I think for this reason, the Minister of Finance should resign. My media got to know, Ogla to pull one now. Yage in the way, Arctic Visayas have been a Dahaya Twitter. Open media debate taker in the Kiela. Make current better. My making a Kiana. Yage no plans. Kiela. My Kuma Liskala. You know, a plans. You got. Yard to pull one now. I will outra then. Moka the mayor at a. Metering a heart, may disaster again, Mammy the Tiane, Mamma Lasti, Kissima Koleak Metu at Teka, Evade Karana, Mameka Kara, Dedas Dahana May, Fire Chat Kin Vera Hanaka, Yai that panel of Yuwa, Mama Aya Bukano, in the Kela, Maget Teka, Eva Gamer, Debate Teker, Api Nenama Aragala Gano, Habe Aragala Kerla Kela, may Prasne Visanan the Bear, Math. Asu Hata, Asuname, May Aragalema, Pari, Tama Hiti, Manghitan Api, Kaname, the Aragale, Karanonang, Manghitana, E Aragale, Api, Dollar Hoyan Aragale, Karanonikira. President Gotha Beraj Paksa has requested his Russian uh, counterpart Vladimir Putin for credit support to Sri Lanka to purchase and import fuel to the country. 
In a tweet, President Gotabe Rajapaksa said that he had a productive telephone conversation with the Russian president during which he had made th this request. The head of state has thanked the Russian leader for all support extended by his government to Sri Lanka to overcome the challenges of the past. President Gotabe has also made a request to restart flight operations of Russia's national carrier Aeroflot to Colombo after the recent diplomatic spat censuring the grounding of an Aeroflot flight at the BIA. Further, both leaders have unanimously agreed that strengthening bilateral relations in sectors such as tourism, trade and culture are of paramount importance to reinforce the friendship between the two nations. Prime Minister Ronald Wickremesinghe says that plans are afoot to distribute over 100,000 cylinders of LP gas daily from the 10th of July among people who have been waiting too long for domestic cooking gas. An LPG consignment is due in Sri Lanka by Sunday. Speaking in Parliament today, the Premier also said that steps will be taken to distribute 25,000 12.5 kilogram cylinders to meet the daily demand just in Colombo. Apita me and Vita Iosi Samagam and Labadilatina, Palavini Naukava in a petrol naukava, visideka visituna kina the wasta katuna. Iera three apita cabinet uh mandle visim patkana the niladaring committing, Anumatiak Duna Ectra Samagamakata, the Hatung Meni Data, Me Rata Avasha in the Ratika again. Now Gatlock Tina Katana Katumani, Venada Api Gatta Milata Vedi, Vedi Middle Katamai, only the Patkalatini. In his Apiada was a Samagamadaosha Peregavi Makarno, a Balapur Tuna Pahalos and Data, a Naukawa Peratagan, it can I think Metanat Mang Metumata. Premium make one dollar hatali and a me, me can have one panahata and a given kill. Because the Kisi Ekanavak ne, I think me, Metanabalane, Veneka Navatan, Etanakagahana, Petrol Nakila, Metana Vilakino, or a horror no, Hamburger no kill, Tel Sang Sav, at the Bankolut, Namavinida, I Balapurutuno, gas again in Naval Lanka, Ekila, Ilanka, Eva Beda Harinta, in Kauradi Kinan, may give me a Vadikila, Crown Hakala, Koma, the Edinator, Happy Gas. Cylinder, Salusum Kalatiano, in Paso, Colomanagre, Dainik Awashata, Kilogram, Dolaha, Maraka, Cylinder, Visipanda, Hag Bagging, Nokadawa, Nikut Karanta, Katu to Karno, Divinapura, Cylinder, Eclatcher, Dolos Dahak, Dainiko, Beda Harima, Juli Mase, Dahayo, Ecolas Finidinisita, Akando, Sidukirima, Aram Bakarno, then at a Pavatina Hinge. Juli Mase, Aosam Bage, Vanavito, Agosto Mase, Mulsati, Vanavita, Pahawayanu Atai, Apex Shakarno. E. Loka Telvela Napole, Cassia Pahalavata Tibicha, Taraleka, E. Anuna Medavada Bessa, Etoko Enisa, Apikagin Gatta, Spot Trade Taka Ganona, Eda Kalindi Pure Taka Mokada, Eat a Sapex of Aoma Masin, Sierra the Hakat, Aduima Sidavendone, or the Loka Telmile Aduima Sidavanisa, Rupia Million Hatsia, the Nanakira, Commission had. Saha, fees had yet a main at Tel Namakata, Mandan Nagamatuma, Ekasada, not to the Keleko, Pekata, Tabra, Tabra, Prasta, and Bulam. Ministry Lanavisanu, Sarva Park, Chicken, Eka Park, Chicken, Bahu Park, Chicken, Monan looking hurry, Visanu, Api Mamanaka Vipakshe, Siluva Kandam, Ekarashi, Karagana, Visanu, Kendri, Sarva Park, Chicken, Dukata, Api Provision. And we'll return after this break with more news. Welcome back to the news. Sri Lanka Railways trade unions have decided to call off their trade union action after discussions with the Minister of Transport this afternoon. Several railway stations stopped issuing tickets today and Sri Lanka Railways employees have complained that they are in dire straits due to the aggressive behaviour of certain commuters which led them to resort to strike action. 
Transport Minister Bandalukunawadana and Railway Trade Union representatives held talks at the Ministry of Highways where the Transport Minister instructed the Secretary to the Ministry and the General Manager of Railways to provide immediate solutions to the issues brought up during talks. The meeting was held to discuss the inability of railways workers to operate certain trains as employees remain unable to report to duty due to the current fuel shortage. Several railway stations have stopped issuing tickets and Sri Lanka's railway employees have also complained that they are in dire straits due to the aggressive behaviour of certain commuters. President of the Railway Station Masters Association has said that few incidents of attacks by passengers within railway stations were reported this morning. The employees of the Panadura Railway Station were attacked today, while the Railway Station Masters have decided to refrain from issuing tickets in Fort Maradana, Panadura, Kolpiti and Ragama Railway Stations. Railway commuters continue to be distressed due to the unavailability of train services. Railway employees have requested military protection as a result. Meanwhile, railway authorities state that the railway operations which were disrupted by fuel shortage will be normalized soon. 50% of office trains were disrupted this morning due to lack of fuel for railway employees to report to work. Deputy General Manager of Railways Garmini Seneviratna said that only 26 trains out of 48 office trains were in operation this morning. Passengers were left stranded due to the cancellation of trains and some people were seen travelling on train engines. Tense situations erupted today at several filling stations operated by Lanka Indian Oil Company, the only fuel provider for non-essential services at the moment. Now at the Lanka IOC filling station in Vallavaya, a group of people behaved in an unruly manner last night and 13 were arrested in connection with the incident. According to the Office of the Police Media Spokesperson, the 13 individuals were brought before the Vallavaya Magistrates Court today and were ordered to be remanded until the 12th of July. Meanwhile, in Gaul, people who were at the fuel queue near the IOC filling station of uh, Ambalavatta protested against police officers who they allege violated uh, rules and regulations and um, prevented them from obtaining fuel at the queues. In the meantime, 121 litres of hoarded petrol at a filling station in Gaul was uncovered by officers of the Akmi Mana police station today. Taking you to business news, the T-bill auction shocked market participants as Sri Lankan yields showed a big leap ahead of the policy announcement tomorrow. The cut-off rate across maturities advanced over 30% and yields rose above 420 basis points. Accordingly, the total offered amount of 70 billion rupees was accepted with a greater allocation towards three-month treasury bills. The three-month yield went up 423 basis points to 28.08% from 23.85% a week earlier. The six-month yield went up 434 basis points to 2874 from 24.4% last week. The one-year yield went up 427% to 28.11% from 23.84% last week. The Colombo board slumped further into negative territory for a third straight session today with the investors booking profits in heavyweight stocks while margin Calls hindered investor sentiment. The main index set off on a downslide shortly after market opened for trading today and continued 
on downward trajectory throughout the session, hitting an intraday low of 7,091 before closing at 7,117, losing 121 points. Retail favorite counter LIOC contributed to the ASPI decline following the drop in global crude oil prices. Turnover was recovered or recorded at 982.3 million rupees, which was 9.4% below the weekly average of 1.1 billion rupees as investors remained sidelined with expectations on a massive rate hike during tomorrow's policy review. Turnover was led by a joint contribution of 47% from the energy sector and transportation sectors. However, foreign investors dominated with net buying for a third consecutive day, although low participation was recorded. Now, the pound value has dropped to its lowest in two years against the US dollar, reflecting the increasing concerns about a global recession as energy prices continue to surge. But the sterling is also weak because markets are worried about future UK economic growth. The pound dropped below $1.19 for the first time in the United Kingdom since COVID lockdown in March 2020. A weak pound means that imports such as food become more expensive for the United Kingdom and it pushes up the price of petrol at pumps. Meanwhile, the dollar remains strong due to interest rate hikes of the US, which is seen as a safe bet by investors. According to analysts, the sterling is also weak and could fail even further as economic stagnation and inflation rises despite the interest rate hikes imposed by the Bank of England. Now in Zimbabwe, the central bank has announced it will introduce gold coins as a legal tender later this month as a measure to curb soaring inflation that has tumbled its currency. The gold coin is to contain one troy ounce of 22 karat gold, which will be available for sale to the public in both local and US dollars and other foreign currencies based on the main international price of gold and the cost of production. They are also to be tagged with a serial number and easily converted to cash. The soaring inflation in Zimbabwe had forced cutting off the dollar in 2009 and has opted for use of mainly US dollars. The local currency had been reintroduced, however reported to have lost its value again. We take you to more local news. Former opposition parliamentarian Hirunika Premachandra and former Valigama Urban Council Chairman Rehan Javikrama were arrested along with seven others outside the President's official residence in Fort today. Police spokesperson SSP Nihal Taldua said four women, including Premachandra, and five were taken into custody after they gathered outside the President's house in Fort, demanding President Gotabe Rajapaksa's resignation. They had allegedly attempted to forcibly enter the premises of the President's house during the demonstration. Former MP Hirunika Premachandra and 11 others who were arrested were later released on police bail. In the meantime, a group of parliamentarians of the Samagi Janabalavega also staged a protest near the Halsdorf court complex, urging government to compensate farmers who lost their harvest in the Yala season. And that wraps up tonight's edition of First at Nine on Other Therana 24. Have a pleasant evening. Good night.